Hi, and welcome to LiveLink Training's Tea Break Tricks and Tips. Little things that you might find useful and could learn in the time it takes to have a cup of tea. Now this one is about how to make a presentation mount for your images. Now we all like our images to look the best. Now when printing, I have my prints in a mount. So why not with my digital prints? Now I did this for myself and I thought it would make an interesting trick and tip. So here goes. Now I've, I've opened an image here and here it is as a background layer. Now I want to change the background layer to a normal layer. So I'm going to do that a couple of different ways. I can click on the padlock or I can drag the padlock over the bin or I can just rename the layer. But here now we've got layer zero so it's now no longer a background layer. Now the next thing I'm going to do is crop my image a little bit bigger. So first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to select my crop tool and I'm going to go and select my aspect ratio and on my camera it's a 2 by 3 or a 4 by 6 so I'm going to click on that. It's brought it me, me actual grid on the wrong way around so I'm going to press the X key to swap it round and then I'm going to grab this corner and drag it out this way and I'm going to grab this corner and drag it out this way just so so that it looks about right. Just eyeball it to see that it looks about right. Okay, I'm then going to double click inside the crop or I can go up and click the tick to accept that. Now I've got some nice space around the outside. But I'd like to fill the background of this with black. So let's create a layer to do that on. So I'm going to go down to the my new layer icon, create a new layer and I'm going to drag it underneath the layer that I've got. And I'll go and rename this. I'll just call it background again. And I'll click to accept that. And I'll make sure that this layer is selected by just clicking on it. And now I want to reset my foreground and background colours to black and white. So I'm going to do that by pressing the D key. And if I need to, I've got the X key which toggles them both. But I want black as my foreground colour, so that looks good. And I'm now going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to use my Fill dialog. And then when it says Contents, I'm going to choose my foreground colour. And then I'll click OK. And that's going to fill all that background all the way behind this image with black. Now this is looking OK, but this is a fairly dark image, so the sum of it actually fades into insignificance, if you like, round this, round this, this side. So I'd like to pick out the actual edge of this with a, with a stroke. So we're going to use a stroke style. Now again, I want it to go around the edge of the image, so I've got to make sure that my image layer is selected. And I can just click on that to select it. I can then go down and double click or click on my FX icon here to add a layer style and I'll select stroke. And that's going to bring in my layer style set to stroke. Now the important parts that I need to, to manage is the size. So I'm going to set the size. Well you can see it's actually brought it up that size now. It's about 9 pixels. That, that doesn't look bad. I want the position to be inside and I'll show you why because if I if I make that bigger and then I set this to say outside you see how it rounds these corners off well I don't want that I want it constraining to the inside of the image so I'm going to reset that back to inside and then take that back down again to something like 9 or 10 pixels something that looks about right and I think that looks OK. My blend mode I'm going to leave set to normal. My opacity I'm going to leave at 100%. And my fill type I need set into colour. And I just need to make sure that I set the right colour. And in this case, I want white. So I'm going to go up in that top corner and click. And then I can click OK to accept that. So I've now got a nice stroke, a nice white stroke going all around the outside of my image. Now we're looking good, so what about a title at the bottom? 
Okay, so I'm going to go to my good old text tool, my horizontal type tool. I'll look in the, the tool options at the top and I'll pick something that I think works. So let's go for Century Gothic. That's quite a favourite of mine. We'll leave it set for 72 point. We'll leave everything. We'll leave it to set to the to centre. It doesn't really matter on that. And we'll go down. Oh, yeah, we'll make sure that we've got white set as the colour. Because by default it come up as black, so I don't want to be typing black text on bl and a black background. Because I won't see it. Okay, I'm going to go down to the bottom here, somewhere in about there, and click. And then I'm going to type the title. And this is a place called the Millennium Bridge in near Castleford. Make sure I've spelt that right. Millennium Bridge. Yep, I like that. I'll just move it to the edge and then I'll hit the enter key to accept it. Hmm, maybe I'll need I'll have it a bit bigger. So I'm going to click and drag across it and then go into here and click because 72 is the maximum that's in the drop down list. And I'll put about a hundred in. And that looks a bit better. And again, hit the enter key to accept that. Right, now I've got all my pieces in place now, but then there's none of it lined up. I would like it lined up dead centre. So to do that, I'm going to use some alignment options. Now they live in my Move tool. If I click on my Move tool, you'll see that I've got a lot of alignment options up on the top here. But they're all greyed out at the minute. I can't use them because Photoshop saying, well, the only thing you've given me at the moment is a text layer and that's already aligned with itself. So I can't line it with itself anymore. So what I've got to do is tell it the other things I want it aligned with. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to click on the background layer. And what that will do is select all the layers in the stack. So now if you look up at the top here, you'll see that all these items have come live. And then what I want is this one here, which is the align horizontal centers. And if I click on that, everything will snap into place bang center. Now if I wanted a little bit less space at the top and more space at the bottom, what I could do is I'll just click underneath in this area just to deselect the layers and I'll reselect just that image layer. And now I can move it up a pixel at a time with the arrow key. And I'm liking that a little bit better. Now, just as a little bit of a finishing touch, it might be nice to have a white stroke around the outside of this border. So I'm going to click on that background layer and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to go to the effects panel. I'm going to put a stroke on. But there's a there's a nice little keyboard shortcut that if you hold the alt key down and click on the effects from one layer and drag it and drop it, you copy exactly the same effect onto another layer. Is that not cool? Well, I'm quite liking that. I think as a finishing touch, what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of a drop shadow on my text down here. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on my text layer. And I'm going to go down to my FX panel again. And I'm going to go for drop shadow. And that'll bring up my drop shadow layer style. Now I'd like to be able to see it. Obviously I've got black as a background, so I'm going to change my blend mode to normal. And I'm going to change my colour to white. I'd like a white stroke if I could. I'll start with the opacity up at 100. I'll leave my angle at minus 138, coming up in this direction. And then I'll just play around with these sliders here. I've got the spread and I've got the distance. Now if I move the distance slider a little bit, just to take it, say, up there a bit. Just play around. I'll, yeah, I'll just blur it a little bit by increasing the size slider. And then what I'll do, I'll just take the opacity right down. So I just want it just a little bit in the background like that. And in fact, let's just move the distance slider a bit more. Yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. 
and then I'll click OK. And for me, that's a finished job. I'm liking that. Well, that's it for this quick trick and tip. I do hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment under the video or share it with a friend or two. Don't forget to check out the more area under the video for the link to any download or free ebooks. And please click the subscribe button so when I upload a new video, you are the first to know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.